Hi, my name is EJ Massa. Some fan named Air Joe sent me the worst rated, cheapest grill on Amazon. So I was wondering if EJ would enjoy a challenge. This is the cheapest, worst reviewed grill I could find on Amazon. Thought it would be funny. One and a half star, $23.99. So I'll accept that challenge and give it the old EJ review experience. You know what that means. I want to make some ribs with it. That's the only way I can tell I like anything. For example, the Pokemon company just announced the new Gen 8 starters, and I'm very pleased with the selection. Grokey, Score Bunny, and Riblet, the ribs Pokemon. So that's going to get a positive review from me. So anyways, even though the listing says Evolio, Evolio, which I'm not sure how you'd pronounce, the box says Babali, Babale? I don't know how to pronounce that either. And it's covered in what I'm assuming is Chinese. Oh, in addition, it says that it has European flavor elaborate buildup, which quite frankly is a feature missing from even the most expensive grills. Come on, Kamado Joe, over a thousand dollars and you can't even do European flavor elaborate buildup. Here's some more features. I can't read them, but I bet they're nice. It shows skewers on the box and those don't seem to be included. Take it out of the box and, oh God. It's flimsy. Here's the charcoal grate and it flops and bends in the wind. The grill grate itself is exceedingly flimsy. It just bends and folds with ease. Made of basically weaved wire. A very terrible grate. You could even say it's ungrateful. Mm. No. 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 Unfolding the legs and they don't feel all that sturdy and wiggle around. The little charcoal basket is bent and it slides in and out with much difficulty. Right out of the box you can see huge defects in the grill. Scrapes and dings. This piece isn't fused together and is bent so that's why it doesn't slide into place right. The charcoal grate goes in there, we'll slide that into place, and add the bent grate on top, which kind of floats above the grill because it's bent. So there it is, all pieced together. Overall, the build quality is exceedingly terrible. Most McDonald's toys have better build quality than this. Which reminds me... Knuckles time, knuckles time, eh, whatever. Okay, so we're gonna have to get clever if we're gonna make ribs on this thing. So, I was thinking that maybe we could make a smoker out of it. And to do that, I need to make a lid. So I took some measurements and the dimensions roughly equate to 9 inches wide and 24 inches long. Which maybe I could use these disposable lasagna pans to make a lid. Two of them together could cover the thing, I just have to do a little modification. Just cut off one end of each of them and, you know, kind of fasten them together. And yeah, my measurements were correct, it does cover the whole grill. I wrapped a sheet of foil around them to sort of tie them together in one piece. So my idea is to have something underneath the ribs so that it deflects the heat from underneath, but also have a lid on top so that it keeps some of the heat in. And for a means of deflecting heat and for flavor, I'd use this plank of hickory wood. Kind of like how they cook salmon on planks. I also have this grill grate which could go in between so the plank doesn't immediately catch on fire. That grill grate alone costs more than the cheap grill itself, but whatever. So grill grate, plank, and then the cover. I'd also poke a couple holes on top for airflow, but not too much airflow. There's these gaping holes on the bottom, which I wanted to try to restrict airflow so it doesn't get too hot. So I used pieces of the lasagna pan that I cut off to block them somewhat. So hopefully that will give me a little bit of control. And I also used some foil to cover more little openings. There, my beautiful contraption is ready. Now to prepare some meat to go in there. I have a half rack of baby back ribs, which I'll season with my all purpose rub, paprika, and a generous coating of Montreal steak seasoning. I wanted to avoid sugary rubs to begin with because I think they'll burn. I'll do kind of a minion method with a bed of charcoal, then lighting up a small chimney and layering it on top. I'm just realizing that it's very cold and windy, so any attempt to control this thing is probably out the window. Put the grate on and my meat on the plank, then cover it up with a lid. Since it is windy, I'll place a heavy object on top. 20 minutes later and, oh f uh, it's burnt. This is fine. This is fine. We'll just turn it over. Another 20 minutes and <laughs> it's nice and black. And, and the wood is stuck to it. I guess you could say it formed a nice bark. No. Time to wrap it in my butter, honey, brown sugar combo. Oh, the leftover wood is on fire. This is fine. And 40 minutes later, I have a wonderful black brick. And check out that beautiful smoke ring. Oh. And by smoke ring, I mean it's solid carbon. Oh, and I found some edible meat. Let me give it a try. 
Okay. So. Super tender. <laughs> Cleanup was fun because I was pulling out the charcoal basket and the legs kept collapsing. So, so that was fun. But other than that, I guess it was an easy cleanup. Okay, so that was an elaborate failure. I went wrong in so many places, it's gonna be hard to list them all. But I'll list a few. For one, I shouldn't have used that grill grate. It's way more conductive than I realized. In fact, it's advertised as being highly conductive, so I should have used something much less conductive like a pizza stone. Instead, I've used something that's advertised as being highly conductive. Another error is that I thought I could play God. I mean, it was whipping cold winds. The walls of the, of the grill were very paper thin and you know I thought I could keep heat in with a, a foil pan. <laughs> so all that and more added up to spectacular failure. If I were to do it again, I'd probably just bank all the charcoal to one side, have the meat on the other and maybe figure out some lid that had a, had thicker walls. But it's negative one degrees out, so I think even that would be a disaster. Also, this isn't a very fair test. You know, this is designed for direct heat, so I'm gonna do a test that uses it exactly how it should be used. I also don't wanna have a pig ghost go in vain. That would be heartbreaking, it would be sad. So I'm gonna guarantee that they're gonna be awesome by cooking them in the instant pot first and then finishing them on the cheap grill. So I place the other half of the rack in there, seasoned just like the other one, with a cup of apple juice. Set the thing to high pressure for 30 minutes. They came out perfect, tender, but not falling off the bone too much. So I poured on some of that OMC barbecue sauce and painted it on both sides. I poured some lit charcoal into the grill and on goes the ribs to set that barbecue sauce and impart a little charcoal flavor. And look at them steam away in the zero degree weather. Flip them over, add some more sauce, regret living in a frigid wasteland. Why couldn't I live in Texas? And they seem done. And there. Yeah, the Instant Pot did most of the work, but the little girl successfully finished them off. Thankfully, much less crispy this time. And they look freaking delicious. Instant Pot ribs finished on that crabby grill. Let's try it out. Mmm. Oh. Oh, that's good. Well, the OMC. Barbecue sauce is way better on ribs than it was on pork chops, I can tell you that much. Mmm, a vinegary... The grill really brought out the vinegary, tasty sweetness. Yeah, you can actually taste more of the honey now. Mmm. I highly recommend that grill to finish Instant Pot ribs. I highly recommend the Instant Pot. Throw that grill in the trash. After a couple of uses, the grill grate is completely warped and the paint on the sides is beginning to burn off. It's coming off like a fine powder in your hands when touched. So quality stuff. You know, I think I came up with the perfect modification for this thing to make it the perfect smoker. Let me try it out. Just get out some foil and crumple it up and there, now it's perfect. It only took $1,500 worth of foil to make it. So in conclusion, I'm not very smart. Yeah. Pretty good conclusion. This grill does hold charcoal and you can put food on top and it can cook it. So I guess it does that job, but I don't expect it to last more than a few cooks. So please get something like, you know, the Jumbo Joe or the Smoky Joe. You'll, you'll have to pay it a tad more, but I swear it'll, it'll last you a lot longer than this guy. Oh, and hey, I have a couple of new shirts on the Red Cow Tea Public store. You can get the the EJ Cook's pig ghost shirt, or you could get, wow, Dr. Flapjack, you've done it again. That commemorates the time that I did it, and it wasn't the first time. It won't be the last. So buy those shirts, support the show, support my terrible crimes. See the link below in the description. Until next time, bye.